They be yeah. needing a picture about Harry Literally. Potter. Yeah. That's it. Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel if you're new here. My name is Lamia and I talk about all things education. And sometimes that means talking about my own educational path, which is why my sister and I are running this limited series called Boarding School and Bubble Tea, where we basically, yeah, I'm not really drinking bubble tea, but it's this. It tastes like Mazoe green, Mazoe cream soda. That's what it's called. Today we'll be talking about high school. This is the juicy episode where we talk about discipline, authority and uniforms as well. Okay, so without further ado, let's talk about our uniforms in high school. So I think the main difference was that we actually had 50,000 more uniforms. <laughs> we did. We had number ones, number yeah. twos. Yeah. Um, we had like three or four different types of sports kits. Yes. So depending on the event or the day, we would have to wear a specific uniform. Yeah. So if it was a special event, we would have to wear number ones. That yeah. was like a special attire. Like, yeah, formal attire yeah. kind of thing. Formal, yeah, formal, exactly. That's that's the word, formal. Yeah. Um, so that was just what? Our blazers? Blazers. Um, uh, it's interesting because we were at the school long enough to see the uniforms change. For the better, um, definitely. For the better, yeah, yeah. So it was basically a white shirt, like a button-down shirt with a black skirt. And then we'd have our white socks, preferably, with um, like school shoes. So it actually changed because right in the, when I started Form 1, uh, we had to have brown school shoes. You could right. not have any other colour, you couldn't change or anything you know yeah. and i think it was a little bit difficult because obviously as we said coming from a primary school which yeah. required you to have black, black school, school shoes, shoes. now was, going yeah. to brown was like oh my god where am i going to find them you right. know yeah um and That's most crazy. high schools actually have brown school shoes so yeah I think supply was actually in demand, so yeah. of course you couldn't get it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was number ones. Um, this would normally be for events like first team playing sports mm -hmm. or coming back to school uh, from a long weekend or prize givings or something. Yeah, so for number twos we used to have, this was like our daily wear, so we used to have like shirts. It was like a checkered pattern mm -hmm. and they were green and white and we used to have like a green skirt because our school colours were bottle green and white I'd say. Um, and brown um, yeah so we had like the green skirt and then boys had like a, a beige khaki kind of like shirt button-down shirt with a matching pair of shorts and they had um, long bottle green uh, sh socks yeah so those were our daily uniforms and then our sports kit this was where it got interesting for Ayan and I because in primary school we just had one standard sports kit for boys and girls it was the same it was you know primary school was like a blue pair of shorts and a white button-down shirt whereas when we got to high school there were so many options and you weren't like um, tied to a specific set of uh, sports kit you had options yeah, we had definitely moved up in the world <laughs> like oh my god there's options I can choose what I want to wear right. so we had like our house color t-shirt mm -hmm. so obviously mine was red Lamy was, was blue yeah um, you could choose to wear that at any time it wasn't like only for a special, for a special day yeah which was obviously the case for mm. primary school yeah um, and then we had we had these little shirts which had our school logo on it. Right. Um, I didn't really like them because yeah, the fit of them was a bit it was a bit strange. The right? The fit and also I think the material. Yeah. It was very really hot material. Um, and then we had white shirts like white polo looking shirts. They mm -hmm. weren't polos, but you know, yeah. um, with the color and like 
yeah. a little little button down. That was my favorite. I think I wore that um, yeah, I, I the can, whole week. When I think about you in high school, that I can picture you wearing the white yeah. shirt. Yeah. I used to just live in my blue shirt because, I mean, I was hostel proud. Everybody needed to know I belonged to that hostel. Shame. I remember. Okay, so when mm. I first started high school, we had shorts, green shorts, but they were... They weren't like a dry fit material. Yeah, they were like cotton. Yes. Yes. Um, so it wasn't comfortable. Like it wasn't comfortable to do sport. But as we moved up in the world <laughs> <laughs> to, you know, like go to higher forms and stuff, eventually our uniform started changing. Yes. And we realized there's actually something called swimmer's shorts. Yeah. And these were like elite. Like I don't even know who had these shorts. I don't even know where, to, like, where we could buy them. Mm-hmm. Um, eventually, the whole school actually changed from the other ones yeah. <laughs> to the new dry fit ones, and like mm-hmm. I think that was probably the best decision. Right. So we had like swimmer shorts, we had athletic shorts, which mm-hmm. are like these skimpy, skimpy little shorts. Which ones do you remember? <gasps> yes, I do. Yeah. And they had the little like yes, slits on yes, the side, like yeah. proper runners shorts. Right. Track suits, Ayan, you know, Ayan was part of like, Ayan was really athletic, so she got to wear like the elite track suit because now there were different levels to track suits. Guys, there's um, levels to this. And so basically, um, the regular, like if you're an ordinary person with no accolades to your name, like me, um, our track suit, what was it? It was uh, like a bottle green, you know, bottle green track suit bottoms and then the track suit top. I'm trying to remember it. It actually had this V in the middle, which was yellow. Right. Um, and then it had a zip all the yes. way to the neck. And it had this and cool it was logo, like, of course. Yeah, it was really puffy also. Yes, it was. Um, so, Lamia is just adding spice. Like, I actually, yeah. from Form 1 to 4, you need to wear that uniform. Yeah. Like, it's the same for all juniors. Yeah. But once you get to Form 4, you get initiated and you know, yeah. you you become a senior. Right. So, obviously, at that point, if you've made it into any first team, yes. and you, I think... Like, I think it's if you have any, like, if you have any, like, team half, awards, half, half colors, colors, full or colors, full colors, colors then yeah, obviously... That's a different story. Yeah, uh, then you're allowed to... Um, wear the first team tracksuit. Yeah, so you get the first team tracksuit. Must track be nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does it feel like to wear that tracksuit? Do you know... Let me tell you. So, I actually used to wear my peasant... Um, <laughs> I used to wear my peasant tracksuit bottoms because they fitted better mm. with my first team tracksuit top. And so the difference was it actually yeah. said first team. Right. Um, so it, all the people needed to know. Like, I, Let me just add, I used to, it used to really like annoy me so much when people would mix the, the tracksuits. And it's not because I was like hating from outside of the club. No, not was. at all. I wasn't hating. You either. can't even get in. <laughs> you guys go ahead. I mean, it must be nice. But I just like, it's the fact that, and I'm not even a fashionista like that. It's the fact that the tracksuits were different shades of green. So the peasant's tracksuit, as Ayana is calling it, it was like a, a bottle green, whereas like the first team tracksuit was a little bit like a, of a lighter shade of green. So, you know, when they mixed it, it was, it was very obvious because, you know, they'd have bottle green pants with the like lighter green top. And yeah. I just did, I just thought it wasn't a good look. But anyway towards the later years of our high school we were introduced to fleece fleece jackets which was probably the best investment it this was. one made because they were yeah. just so comfortable yeah. so we were allowed to wear them in the winter obviously we it was cold yeah. like yeah. Zimbabwe is cold you guys I don't think people have this conversation enough like it's I mean, actually cold it gets cold but I mean we still have the best climate in the world period. definitely definitely yeah. But it, it definitely um, gets cold, yeah. Yeah, so in the winter term, we weren't expected to wear our skirts. Yeah, um, our number day. two uniform, yeah. Option. So as yeah. we had moved up in the world, obviously, <laughs> we were allowed to now choose in the winter. Like, yeah. you could wear your tracksuit to school, mm-hmm. you know. It didn't. It wasn't only for sport. So yeah. we could also wear our little peasant tracksuit bottoms. Yeah. Little first team. Yeah with our fleeces that which i amazing. thought just looked so nice it and really comfortable. Did. like it just looked like we were there to have good times it did it was giving athleisure it was really yeah. really giving like jd employee you know exactly and then also as part of like the first team eliteness they used to have these white scarves that they could wear in the winter time massive long ones like harry potter style everything yeah. you're picturing about harry Literally. potter yeah that's it and obviously the the scarf was a symbol of you know first team status and like Again, not hating from outside of the club, but like there were just so many disparities. 
and I remember we were kind of like, you know, I was always wondering where's the academic scarf, you know, if people can just get a team award or half colours or full colours for athletics and then, you know, have all rights reserved to wear this, you know, scarf, what about the people who get academic colours and whatnot? True. And so, anyway, there actually was a scarf, but they were so much, like, rarer to come by, and I don't even think the people who used to actually, like, make the scarves were, you know, they didn't get many requests for these things because people didn't know it existed. Mm -hmm. And basically, the academic scarf was a green one. Yeah. And School colours. School colours, yeah. So and it was full bottle green, yeah. and then right at the, like, the, the ends of the scarf, mm -hmm. it had the yeah. little... Tassels. tassels yeah <laughs> and then it had like I think two yellow, yellow stripes yeah and I remember like my my classmates and I like all super nerdy and not at all athletic I don't even know whose scarf this was but we managed to get this scarf and we just like pass it around like okay dude you're gonna wear it tomorrow okay cool you need to have it ready for me by Thursday because I'm gonna wear it like we were also doing levels yeah. you know not everyday sports some days biology so yeah. I might be a bit of a hater here but the first team scarf was only if you made it into a first team winter sport really you were not allowed to acquire the first team scarf if you were not in um, first team basketball or first team hockey really so I was like so all my efforts for first and, and third term are like wasted because I that can't get crazy. a scarf but maybe I'm just just being a hater <laughs> I actually remember this one time, you might not remember, but you were probably like leaving, it was like break time on a Friday. Anyway, you left me with the first team scarf, so I was like, well, I can't just be carrying this, like, let me just see one time what it feels like. So I put the scarf on, you guys, I kid you not, I saw like the main sports coach for girls. She just looked at me from like a distance. And just with like the glance she gave me, I took that scarf off so quickly. As we said in a previous episode, if you have not watched it, girl, what you doing though? Go check it out. So as we said, like sports in Zimbabwe was just highly regarded. Like yeah. everything had to do sport, had to do with sports. Yeah. But also, you know, in our primary school, like they made a little bit of an effort to shine a little bit of a spotlight yeah. on other things other than yeah. sport. But in high school, it was just very sports dominated. Yeah. Um, everything had to do with sport. So I often get asked if, you know, if it was giving military and how strict it was and stuff. Yeah, it was. It was very much giving military. I actually remember we had a specific punishment called military. So as we've already mentioned in previous episodes, Ayan and I were actually in different hostels. And I always think that my hostel was the stricter one. I think my mom can back me up on this one. Like, our hostel really was... Ayan, you've often called it, what, prison? It was, you guys. Yeah. Like, no, it was. It was a lot more strict than Taraz, I would say. You know that meme of, like, Squidward looking outside and Patrick and Spongebob are, like, running amok outside? That was literally, like, the Bumba girls looking at Tarara girls, I feel like. Because it just... To us, it really seemed like you guys got away with so much. Like, that we would just... It would never fly in, in our ends. But yeah, Form 1 is really tough. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. My Form 1 experience was pretty bleak, not going to lie. Not no to take sees. away from Lummi's experience, obviously, but I think as the years progressed, as we moved on to higher forms, mm -hmm. like, I think it got a little bit more lenient every mm -hmm. year. So for me, I feel like I had, a lo I had it a lot worse than Lamia in Form 1. Yeah, so for example, in Form 1, you have different sets of responsibilities. So you have your like your group duties that you do with your other Form 1s. You're pretty much put into different groups and you have different like chores to do. You can, you know, add what you guys had to do in Chirara, but in Vumba we had um, <coughs> we had to do prep room, which was actually my favorite chore out of all of them, I think. Prep room. Yeah, prep room was basically, you know, we were in the prep room, which is basically where we did our homework. So it was, you know, like a really large room with, you know, at least anywhere between 15 to 20 tables with, you know, chairs all around the tables. And basically yeah. we had to lift up all the chairs onto the table and we had to sweep um, and just make sure that there were no papers hanging around. We needed to make sure that the bins had been emptied in, in the prep room. We just needed to make sure that there was like no lost property and stuff and then we also had um foyer which was basically in our hostel making sure that you know as as people enter the first the first impression they're getting is one of a tidy hostel that's something um, that's been installed in her head i swear so your seniors told you that what this is the first part you're, you're probably 
Yeah, so it really needed to be spotless. And like, I was really proud of our foyer, especially after our hostel got renovated towards, you know, my latter years. Like, Let's talk about that, actually. So when we first started Form 1, oh, yeah. guys, the hostels were Both so them, dark. Yeah. Like, I remember Lamia's really being dark. worse. Like, I swear there was no electricity And I felt there. like yours was really dark. No, you guys. So I was like, we, Thomas Edison created a light bulb. We have stuff now. <laughs> I don't know if it was like, because we had so many trees and stuff around. Mm. Um, but also the color scheme that was going yeah. on, it was not it. You guys. It was like we need to. Do you see this wall here? It, yeah, was, it like was like this, bottle green, <laughs> but like like a really dark dark color, and it would just like make everything really dark inside. Like you couldn't see anybody. Yeah. <laughs> so we had a massive um, corridor going all the way up, right like, to the top, right? Yeah. So I don't know if if the hostel was actually built on a hill or like yeah. some kind of slope. Yeah. Because you would start at the bottom and you would look all the way oh, up yeah. you couldn't actually see who was at the top right. because it, it was there was no light so after a few years i'm not sure i think mm. i'll th my third or fourth yeah form around there um they renovated and like changed the tiling and yeah. like we had steps before yes but like really long yeah far apart wide steps, steps. <laughs> like and and that's the thing they weren't even uh kiss kiss they weren't equal so it was like one long one, then Short. two steps that, you know, it was yeah. just really... I had fun though, because I used to like bolt down, like I used to run down and like my legs would be striding and then some of them I need to do like a small little gallop. Oh my goodness. And then... One of the other chores was actually sweeping that. I can't remember what we used to call it. What would we call it? Corridor. corridor. Yeah. And we'd have Who's to sweep. Corridor? Literally. And we'd just like um, have to sweep those. And I actually liked doing corridor as well because it was literally just, so we'd have, um, like Ayan was talking about, there was like a long, you know, corridor all the way up and then we'd have wings on the side into like different dorms. But then in between the dorms, like in the quad area, there'd be doors leading out onto the quads. So basically, if you were sweeping, you could just sweep the dust outside onto the corridor. I used to do that and we were told not to do that because obviously- You were so lucky because our hustle, it wasn't aligned. Like oh. our floor wasn't in line with the door, so oh, really? you'd have to sweep it up anyway. And I, was, I had good fun just... <laughs> and um, uh, now you know. I mean, um, so foyer basically we'd have to like mop and sweep the foyer. And this is the one I hated with a passion. It was bell duty. And this meant that you had to... Wake up before everybody. You needed to be so... And I have no problem with being punctual. Like, ask anybody. Like, when it comes to being on time, I'll show up. Mm -mm. I respect people's time. But I just really didn't like the idea of having a whole hostel depend on me bringing the bell at the exact same time. And we say bell. It wasn't a bell. It was literally a gong. So... We, uh, that's your hostel. We had a bell. Oh. Here we go. Let it speak for itself. We were elite, you guys. So yeah, we had a we had a, a, a gong and basically there was like a like a baton and then we had to just hit this thing and guys like it just damaged your eardrums when you were actually ringing it and also mm. we had to like there was a specific way to like hit this gong. There wasn't you don't just go there and do what you want. This is where your rhythm and sense of melody comes into play. But you had to ring it five times. Like if somebody knocked the gong six times we'd literally be in trouble. Like this actually happened because Shem, when I was in form one, we had, um, uh, she had a lot going on for herself, but like just music wasn't one of them. So she just like, she just couldn't comprehend that it was just five times and at you know specific intervals and stuff. And we'd get into trouble because like the head of house and the seniors, they would literally be listening to make sure that it was only five times. So um, here's the thing, like, if you mess up, it's not just yeah. you. You're actually messing up for your entire Form yeah. 1 group. Because there's literally no individual punishments. There's only... Nothing. Blanket yeah. punishments. Blanket punishments. Blanket punishments. <laughs> the bane of my existence. Like, even now, like, sometimes I think, like, why do I think so communally? It's always been, like, if I do something, we're all going to take the fall and vice versa. Yeah. So, yeah, that was it. I think it was pretty similar in my hostel. As I said, we obviously were elite because we actually had a bell. Um, so the purpose of ringing the bell was to actually wake up the hostel, mm -hmm. like to start the day. So it needed to be right on time. Could not be a minute before, could yeah. not be a minute after. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and your seniors would r literally be out to get you. Like they, they would were. be awake, trying to listen yeah. and be like, ah. Oh, we were on bell duty. 
who's on prep room and yeah i mean i really enjoyed like my group i was in group one i remember that till this day it's not like i was friends with everybody in my group but we were very much like efficient efficient people we just wanted to do it get it over and done with and then just dip that was just one set of responsibilities you had as a form one the main thing was sprogging what is sprogging i am what what does it mean to be a sprog to be colonized <laughs>